Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here and today I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to make a video for my mom and my friends. So hi mom and hi friends who are really really new to diamond painting and have never done it before. They're like, what's going on? This is basically a cross stitch or a paint by number, but instead of using paint or thread, you're using little resin beads, which make a beautiful effect on a painting when it's finished and it makes it sparkle so much. So here I have a picture that I've had created of my dog, Luna. Basically, it's just my photo that's been printed on a canvas and then sticky glue applied on top. Diamonds haven't been placed on this spot yet. So you're just starting. What do you do? First, you need to make a section like I've just instinctually done. Pull back your cover, whether it be paper or plastic. Pull back a small and manageable space, and at first that might be even smaller than this. Then you need to choose a color. Which one is the best for you? This might depend, after a little while, once you've had practice, you'll know yourself, if you're right-handed or left-handed, where you want to begin. For me, when I open a section, I like to begin on the right side and then work my way left so that my hand doesn't get stuck in this sticky glue. But first, let's get our accessories. The most important thing that you need in this tool is a diamond painting pen or a drill pen. Sometimes these are called drills and not diamonds. I don't know why. <laughs> so you need a pen, and this is the kind of pen that comes in every kit. They also come in pink and blue, I'm going to use the sparkly one today because I think it's pretty. Sometimes when you get a kit, you'll also get something that looks like this. That's called a multi-placer. You can stick that at the end of your pen and then you can place more than one diamond at a time. This side is just for one diamond, but this side you can have many. Like this one, for example, can place three at a time. Now, if you try to place diamonds, Right now, nothing will happen because you need to have glue in your pen. With every kit, it comes with this kind of plate of wax. It could be pink, it could be yellow, white, blue. It doesn't really matter the color. It could also be many different shapes as well. It could be smaller or bigger, but none of that matters. All you need to know is that this goes into your pen. First, you wanna peel back the cover like so. The plastic protects it from sticking to everything else. Then you dip your pen in, just like that. Do you see how the, the pink is now inside of that barrel? That's exactly what you want. And do you see how it doesn't extend past the tip? That's also what you want. If it's extending past the tip of the pen, then you've put too much wax in and you might have to scrape it off with your nail like that. And I'll show you why in a minute. You can do the same thing for your multi-placer. Just stick it into the glue. You may need to stick more than once. And there you go. The glue is inside the pen, not sticking out. If it's sticking out, you can scrape with your nail, just like that. Ta-da! So now our drill pen is filled. Our diamond painting pen is filled. So we can put the wax away. Make sure you cover it up or it'll go dry. The next step is to put diamonds into your tray. So here I'm using a bead container that I've labeled with the symbol that is on the canvas. Can you see it there? And I'm going to match this symbol to that symbol. But if you don't have labels on your containers already and you're a brand new novice, you're going to need to do one extra step. 
This right here is my inventory list. We also call it many different things. It could be called a legend, but this is what tells you which symbol is what color number. On your canvas, it could be a three or four digit number, like so, which is called a DMC number. This actually matches to the DMC floss list, like cross stitching. It's the same color number, like Pantone. But if you don't have this kind of number, you might just have one, two, three, four, five, and so on. That will match the bag that the diamonds come in. So for example, you may have a bag of number 166 or number five, if it was the one, two, three, four, five, fifth one on your, on your legend. So depending on the way that your canvas is marked, you will just reach for that number and then you could, you could change the baggie, you could put the symbol on it if it makes it easier for you. So if we go down the color list here, down the legend, and look for the check mark. We'll get there eventually. It's actually right here. see it hiding here at the bottom. So that color number is 3865. When I first started this canvas, I took all of the colors and put them into a bead storage container tray. Now that's because I've been doing this for a little while and that's just the way that I like to organize my diamond painting drills like this. This makes it easier for me to find the color that I'm about to work on, and it means I don't have to work with those flimsy little baggies. But if you have the baggies, or if you have a little plastic sleeve that only opens once, those are what I wanted to tell you about. You just need to fold over the open corner that you cut and use scotch tape to hold it closed. It's perfectly fine. You do not have to buy one of these, okay? But if you do decide that you love this hobby, I would highly recommend this. So now what do you do? Well, you need your pen. You need your tray. And you need your diamonds, no matter what container they come in. Okay, so now you want to take your diamonds and pour them into your tray. Don't put too many. <laughs> if you put too many, just put some back in the bag. Then shaking the tray. A lot of people have different ways of doing this. For me, it's just back and forth. Some people find it really helpful to do this. And now we're ready to begin. There are also different schools of thought on how to place diamonds. So as you saw, I just picked it up with the end of my pen and then you just find the symbol and place. Seems tedious, right? Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> By doing this repetitive motion, your brain is active, but you're not having to think too hard about much of anything. It leaves you space to listen to books, listen to music, to watch TV. Well, I say watch, but listen to TV. Anything that you want to do, which relaxes you. That is the multi-placer. I use the multi-placer almost all the time, but I'll show you how to single place as well. Some people believe that using what's known as a checkerboard pattern is the best way to go especially when you do square drill paintings, square diamond paintings. This one is around. The squares are a little bit different. Some people think they're more advanced. I don't think so. So once you get your little checkerboard going, 
then you can fill in those little spaces in between and it kind of acts as a little guide so that it's not so difficult to have to concentrate on where to place them because you've already got kind of the edges of the other diamonds to use and hear that click sometimes you'll hear it sometimes you won't it's very satisfying Uh-oh, I've messed up. Can you see how I've placed them on their side? I didn't mean to do that. All you need to do is use the pen to slide them back in place. If you've misplaced a drill, let's say you put it on the wrong symbol, like that, you can use your pen to lift up the diamond and then pick it up again. You could also use tweezers. Sometimes tweezers are included in the kit. Some people find the tweezers to be easy to place diamonds with. I, I'm not very good at that, but some, pe some people really are. Now, I finished this part of the section. Let's say I have to go and make some dinner. I need to cover this up and put this away. So I'll show you how we put that away. Let's zoom out a little bit. I've got my container. You could use your bag. Um, you could use the bag it comes in, but you just want to pour those diamonds back into the tr into the container. Or the baggie. And then close it up. Whether that be with scotch tape or with a zip lock on the top. And then you simply cover it back up with the plastic or paper that comes with the diamond painting. So everyone, I hope this video was a little bit helpful for you. This is a very, very, very beginner's guide to how to diamond paint. Just keep going. It's the same repetitive motion over and over with as many colors as you have. And in the end, after, after a few days, a few weeks, you'll have a beautiful, beautiful diamond painting to share with your friends. I'll try to show some completed works here at the end of the video so you can see how beautiful they can turn out. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up down below. Please share with your friends who are new to diamond painting, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Take care, everyone.